Where are you coming from? Hi, uh, my name is Bryce Gosnell. I'm a publisher for the Americas of Lonely Planet. I've been there for six and a half years. Previous to that, as a uh, Bromers, uh, which is part of John Wiley and Sons in New York City. I uh, was there for about seven years. And previous to that, Macmillan, uh, computer publishing, believe it or not. Um, and well, that's my story. Uh, can I introduce, can you say something about how you're currently marketing? Just uh, for a moment. Um, sure. It, it, in terms of, we, we do traditional marketing with our print product, but in terms of the ebook space, um, that's actually been a very interesting and developing conversation. So, uh, for example, uh, what we're doing is, we, we're doing a lot of partnering with our retailers. So, what we're finding is major retailers like Amazon, uh, I would say Apple as well, who doesn't have established relationships with publishers. So, Apple is sort of figuring their way out in this in this business. Um, and the, uh, Amazon, BM, and, and Apple as the three primary ones. What we're doing is we're actually working with them on trying to find things that they can sell at a reduced price or actually offer for free. Uh, the challenge with us, for me, as a publisher is, well, how do I put that in my queue? How do I put that within my schedule? Um, and is it really what we should be doing? So it's, you know, uh, it's, there's some experimentation going on, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, well, we can get more details about that later. Samantha. Hi, I'm Samantha Rubenstein. I'm a publicist at Josie Best Wiley. I work on the religion, psychology, and education titles. I started my career at Edelman Public Relations, and then I did the Midwest Media Relations for Starbucks in Chicago. The Bay Area seduced me, and I came here to uh, represent startups. I worked on livingsocial.com and mint.com. And then I realized that I just really love books. And so uh, finally, I landed at Josie Bass, and um, I'm very happy to be there. I want to say about Samantha, is having worked with her uh, for about a year, is that she was the first commercial, traditional book publisher, marketer, publicity person I knew, who understood the importance of an author's being online, and who went to book bloggers to sell books. Book bloggers. A lot of people don't know what book bloggers are. I didn't at that point. But it's, it's exactly how Amanda Hawking sold all her books. She went to the people who had websites that did that, that, that were interested in her kind of publication. And what Samantha did was we went to the mommy bloggers for our parenting books. And boy, was that, that really worked. We had a lot of good parenting books and those mommy bloggers, they really communicated very well with each other and that's what, how we sold books. One of ways. Hi, I'm Lena Adler. I'm the senior marketing director at Harper One. Um, the uh, imprint of Harper Collins is out here in San Francisco. Um, I, and um, I uh, started my career in publishing at, when it was Harper San Francisco. I did three years in publicity there. And then I left for Chronicle Books for a year where I did cookbook uh, publicity and fiction publicity. And I came back to Harper One in the marketing capacity. And you know what we're doing right now is, is a, a mix of digital and traditional in terms of eBooks. We're also playing with price promotions, especially on backlist to promote front list. So we'll either do a backlist price promotion or maybe we'll do um, you know, uh, a low-priced uh, backlist ebook with some teasing material for the front list book that's coming out. And, you know, of course, like everyone else, we're experimenting in the social realm. We're trying to get all of our authors online. We're doing a lot of outreach to bloggers. And, um, and you know, that's pretty much what we're doing right now. Hi, I'm Arielle Ekstedt, and I just want to add one thing to Alan's intro, which is that Julia Child takes credit for being the first author to go on tour. So I don't know who was first, but in Mastering the Art of French Cooking, she says that she was the first. So, <laughs> um, so um, my name is Ari Alexa. could argue with her. I yeah, really, her. that's right. Um, and I am the co-founder of a company called The Book Doctors, and we work with both um, 
wannabe authors, already authors, self-published authors, all across the board. So we're seeing the entire spectrum of what people are up against. Um, I'm also the co-author of a book called The Essential Guide to Getting Your Book Published, which spends a lot of time talking about publicity and marketing and all the social media stuff. Um, and then I've been an agent at large with the Levine Greenberg Agency in New York City for the last 19 years. And lastly, I'm co-founder of a business called Little Mismatched, which started by selling socks that don't match in packs of threes and uh, which now has stores everywhere from Disneyland to Fifth Avenue in New York City. And the only reason I bring that up is because I believe today that anyone who's in this business has to have an entrepreneurial attitude. And after leaving publishing to start that business and being out of publishing for about five or six years and then coming back, I saw such a huge, lack of entrepreneurialism, and it shocked me. Um, and so that's something that I, that I truly believe in and would like to talk some more about at some point. Um, hi, my name is Ted Barnett, and um, I'm the co-founder of a new company called Byliner, where I run operations and marketing. And my background is in um, technology, has been in technology product marketing over the years. Uh, I was at Apple and um, AOL and Ophoto and, and other um, kind of consumer technology companies. And I, I, I had been an entrepreneur myself, had two startups uh, before. One was acquired by AOL and I worked there for a while. Um, and more recently, a, a website for kids, um, an online world for kids called Super Secret. But um, in uh, late last year, I'd been advising a fellow named John Taman who was thinking about uh, the future of publishing from, from his point of view and, and um, being an avid reader of nonfiction myself, I got really excited about what he was doing and I joined uh, Byliner. And um, just a quick overview of what Byliner is, we <clears throat> started in February of this year and the focus at Byliner is on, uh, we are an e-book publisher, focused on uh, books that, that lie between sort of magazine length and book length, um, what Amazon calls Kindle singles. Um, so they're between 10 and 30,000 words typically. Um, we started we started in the nonfiction category. John's uh, and our and our editorial director's background are in uh, magazine editing from outside and and other magazines. And <clears throat> um, be, because of the relationships they had, we were able to do uh, our first title with John Krakauer called Three Cups of Deceit," which was based on a, a sixty minutes piece. So the day after that piece came out, our ebook came out, and um, uh, was great for us. Uh, yeah, um, uh, being tied to the show there, um, but our, our purpose and, and, and focus is on, on, on these short form nonfiction pieces. So we followed that with uh, a piece by William T. Bowman, who we had sent to Japan to, to uh, tour kind of what's happening in Japan in the wake of the a tsunami there. He wrote a piece called Into the Forbidden Zone. Uh, and then more recently, uh, Holly Finn, um, a writer from the Financial Times, uh, uh, just wrote a piece called The Baby Chase about her experience with IVF. Um, so kind of a wide range of nonfiction, but all in this sort of short category, short uh, form category. Um, the pricing between you know dollar ninety nine and two ninety nine, and um, and I, I should say that, that if you actually go to buyliner.com and, and and see that what the site is, we're supporting the ebooks that we're doing with a website that that hopes to attract readers of nonfiction by gathering up all the long form nonfiction that we can find on the web from you know the Atlantic and New Yorker and outside, Sports Illustrated, and everywhere, <clears throat> uh, we, we uh, have a little header that sort of describes the, you know, the first part of the article, and then we'll take you to the original. Um, we have 60,000 articles there, and the, and the intent is to draw readers in who can then say, I love John Krakauer, or Caitlin Flanagan, or Mary Roach, who, whatever authors they love, and see all the work that they've ever done that's, that can be found anywhere online, including their books. Um, so they can sort of declare their allegiance to those, to those uh, uh, writers and help writers build that relationship to their readers, um, which I think is a new opportunity. Um, so I guess uh, um, I, I come from more of a technology background. Um, there's certainly a lot of kind of disruption going on in this space, and, um, and, and but I'm an optimist that in the end there, there will still be writers and readers and, and people will need to help edit and curate and market these pieces to folks. It's just all in transition right now, and it's, it's not clear even to us you know, how, it, how it'll end, but um, uh, I think it's, as Alan was saying, a very exciting time, and then we're we're kind of focused on on uh, trying to find out where the ebooks are going to take us. Thanks. I want to start with a question. 
just a kind of devil's advocate question, you know. At the risk of being tarred and feathered and running out of town on a rail, I'd like to repeat a lot of what I've heard that, that kind of questions like, well, since uh, the author is really more important than the publisher, the author can get to the reader pretty clearly, uh, pretty directly, without a gatekeeper or any obstructions. And since, uh, you know, uh, the business is so lousy, uh, is there any future at all? Are we all going to be out of work? Who needs book publishers and who needs book publishing, marketing, and publicists? I, I'm looking for the answer with only a little bit of tongue in cheek. And, but it's a serious question. Do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, uh, one, one point we made uh, as we launched the company, people ask us uh, that question uh, um, in the press. And in our view, and investors, when we were trying to raise money, um, are there going to be publishers in the future? And our belief is, sure, you know, writers could go straight to Amazon and upload an EPUB file and, and have a book in Amazon, in, in the store themselves. Um, but it turns out our experience so far, at least, is, is bearing out that they want help with editing and designing the book, um, shaping the story in some cases. We, we actually bring sometimes the story to the writer. Um, and then there, there's a lot, as, as some of you, as most of you may know, just to, to the task of social media marketing and getting to the reviewers and the blogs and, and, uh, um, and Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff mystifies most of the writers who are trying to focus on their craft and they need help with this. So what we say is, you know, if you don't do a good job of this, that is what will happen. They'll upload their book and, you know, we won't be adding any value, but there's, there seems to be quite a lot for us to do. It's, it's just changing, the nature of it's changing. But I think um, authors need our support to help get their, uh, their works to folks and, and, and can't do all this themselves. Good answer. I was just going to just emphasize even further from the author's point of view how much work it is to do all of these jobs. And most writers have a full-time job. So to have another multiple full-time jobs on top of that, to p play publisher is such a difficult thing to do. And also to have the expertise. So then you have to go out and hire the right experts. And how do you know who the right experts are, et cetera? So I think there will be people who are want to do play all those roles. But I also think there are lots of people who really don't. That's right. A lot, you know, publish, uh, writers are often shy people who uh, want to just uh, be by themselves. It's not easy to write, face the blank screen or page. But uh, some authors really do enjoy it. Uh, you know, Amanda Hawking, let me just use her as an example again, uh, took a large advance from St. Martin's because she said she wanted to have more time to write. But she's, she found herself back online three or four hours a day because she loves it and she loves the contact and the inspiration and the intertake with her readers. So it's really a very personal thing to based upon temperament and personality.